Hello. Let's see, people should be coming in soon. All right, it's seven o'clock, 7.01. Hopefully some people come in and as we get started, I just hope everybody's having a good day today. It's hot here in California. It was a hot day, so I hope everybody's staying cool. Today is day one of the self-care series. We're going to talk about sleep and what are some of the things that we can do to better our sleep, right? Um, so let's see if people have any questions as they come in. Hello, Yvette. Welcome. We're going to be talking about sleep today. So as you come in, <laughs> just rate your sleep. Are you staying, are you staying cool? I was just saying it's been really hot. So it's been hot outside today. And I, since we're talking about sleep, can you rate on a scale from one to five, five being I sleep great. I have no issues and one, I sleep terrible. And then in between, you choose your range. Where are you when it comes to sleep? Are you sleeping great or are we having some trouble with sleeping? All right. Well, we're going to get started. Thank you for being here, Vet. Hopefully we get more people come in and join. I know it's uh, it's been a nice day, so people are probably out trying to stay cool, having dinner. And anyways, we're going to talk today about sleep. This is part one of the series of self-care series. <gasps> You've been sleeping great. I'm so glad. Yay, Yvette, so proud of you. So maybe you can share with us what are some of the things you've been doing to have good sleep um, as we move along. But thank you for joining the series today. And series one is self-care is sleep. Sleep is essential to our well-being. We have to sleep. 
if we are not sleeping well, yay, I'm so glad that it's going well. Um, if we do not sleep, our body doesn't function, right? It doesn't function correctly. We are grouchy. We are not patient. We are not 100%. We forget stuff. So sleeping is extremely important and it's essential. So part of self-care, the number one thing that we have to do if things are off, like we talked last week, right? We kind of feeling stuck or we're feeling a little bit depressed or sad. Yes, schedule bedtime and alarm to wake up at the same time every day, even on the weekends. Yes, keeping a regular schedule definitely helps in staying um, in staying in maintaining your bedtime right routine. So we'll talk about bedtime routines. We'll talk about kind of how it is that we have to set it up to and be disciplined because if not, we throw it off and then we are going to be grouchy and not pleasant to be around. Um, and aside from that, if we keep stacking up, right, if we are not recharging every night, what happens is that we end up getting sick, right? Either getting sick physically or mentally because we start getting depressed or we start getting anxious or we, again, inter uh, interpersonal relationships are not the greatest. Hi, Fern. Welcome. We just started. So we're just talking about the importance of sleep and on a scale from one to five, if you can rate yourself, five being I sleep wonderful, I have no issues with sleep. And then one is I sleep terrible. I, I don't sleep very well. Um, then you can rate yourself kind of where you fall in within that category between one and five. All right. So if we are not sleeping, we are not functioning correctly. Okay. So I want you to think about it kind of like our cell phone. Right? We all depend on our cell phone and we charge it. If we don't charge our cell phone, then we can't use it because the battery dies. Okay, That's what happens with us. If we don't recharge ourselves every night, our cells are not able to repair okay, the damage that we did throughout the day. Our muscles cannot recover from our, you know, our workouts or just from the work that we're doing throughout the day. So our body needs to be able to rest, to recover and recoup so that we can do it again the following day. And like I said, with the cell phone, if we only charge it a little bit, then it only lasts a little bit and then it runs out of juice, right? So that's the same with us. If we only sleep for three, you know, three hours at a time, then we're only going to have a little bit to give throughout the day because we're going to be exhausted because we didn't get our rest to recharge. And, you know, we're going to need something else to kind of get us going, right? And that's where we get in trouble because we start using stimulants. So we pump ourselves up with caffeine or, you know, other sweet things, uh, something that is going to help us stay awake throughout the day, which is not necessarily healthy. And then we have a big crash, okay? And if we do it day after day after day, what happens is that our body suffers. So let's talk a little bit about the function of sleep. How is it that sleep functions? So sleep has to do with light, okay? The circadian rhythm is the 24-hour cycle and it's based on darkness and light. So just like the chicken, so if you ever have had birds, you know, that you have to cover them at night so they can sleep. That's the same with us. There is a message that is sent through our to our brain, through our eyes, when the light hits our eyes, right? So hormones start getting produced that let us know it's time to sleep or let us know, hey, it's time to wake up, it's time to be productive. And if we don't get daylight throughout the day, it doesn't quite get that message, okay? And if we at night, we, we are doing this, right? If we are in our screen time, we're watching TV, we have artificial light, then the message to our that goes through our eyes is that, hey, it's time to be awake. It's not time to sleep yet. And it's going to keep us up. So darkness and light is basically, you know, the basic way of sort of addressing sleep issues because we have, in order to fix it, there has to be darkness and there has to be light. So that is the circadian rhythm, okay? So I'm going to ask you some questions, and I'm going to see kind of where you are. 
So for Yvette, she kind of answers them because she says she does have a scheduled bedtime. And she's pretty strict about it. What about you, Fern? Do you have a, a bedtime routine already? Do you have a set time? I go to sleep at 11 or 10 or 12, but is it regular every night? Or is it kind of sometimes it depends? Where are you at with your sleep schedule? It's a steady or low of the place. Right? So I'll ask you some questions and I want you to kind of think about them. And if you can put them in the chat, that would be great. But keep an inventory. Okay, so when we are looking at sleep, we want to assess first where we're at and where we're starting to see what we can do to address it. So do you have a bedtime? Do you have a bedtime routine? What does your bedroom look like? Okay. Is it dark in there when you go to sleep or do you have kind of like a night light or some sort of, you know, light that stays on throughout the night that is kind of bright? Um, how many hours of sleep do you get a night? What do you do before bed? Okay. Are you having a big meal before bed? Are you, um, are you drinking, you know, soda before bed? Are you, um, exercising before bed, all those things play a factor, okay? So what are you doing before you go to bed? Like one to two hours before bedtime, what are you doing? And then are you stressed out? That's also a factor when it comes to sleep. It throws off our, our hormones, okay? So if we are stressed out, we're thinking that we have to, you know, be awake. Um, so to survive, right? We go into survival mode and therefore we can't sleep. Or we have thoughts that are racing through our head and don't let us sleep because we're thinking about what's going to happen. What am I going to do about this? Or what if this happens? Or what if that happens? And it, they, it doesn't let us sleep. We're restless. Okay. Um, how long? Let's see. Oh, are we drinking before bed? All right. Alcohol, you know, it's like, oh, I'll have a glass of wine and then I'll fall asleep. Well, not really, right? Um, what happens is maybe you'll fall asleep, but you won't have REM sleep. But you won't have the deep sleep that's necessary to recover. So you'll still wake up tired, even though you fell asleep because of the glass of wine. Okay. All right. And then what are some changes that I can make? So... I know Fern said that it's hard to type, and yes, that's, this one, that's one of the delays, right, of, of being live, that it takes a little while to get the messages across. Okay, yes, it's a little bit of a delay. Yeah, so we'll have to work with that. That's just kind of what happens. But thank you for letting me know that it, you guys are typing. It's just, and I'm, I'm like that. By the time I finish typing my message, we already moved on to the next topic, so I'm just slow at typing. I know you guys are quick, so it's the, it's the Instagram. All right. So once you answer those questions, you know, and you assess kind of what is your routine, what do you do, then we'll move on into ruling out things, right? Sometimes we can't sleep because it's a medical issue. There's something that's happening with our body that is not letting us sleep. And it usually has to do with some hormones. So it is important to get a medical checkup um, so that we can kind of figure that out. And then... Aside from, you know, just ruling out that there's a medical condition or some, you know, some sort of medical situation that is not, you know, that is disturbing our sleep, we also want to check with your doctor if you're taking any supplements or if you take, even if they're herbal, because sometimes there are counter interactions that can happen with medication if you are taking other medication or if, you know, you're prone to something else like high blood pressure, some of the herbal medicines to help with sleep impact your blood pressure or, and other things. So we want to make sure that there's no interaction that is going to be problematic uh, if you are taking supplements. So always kind of check in with your doctor before taking stuff. All right. Then we move on to eliminating barriers. So with the initial questions that I asked, right, what were some of the barriers? Now we move on. I mean, what were some of the, when you identify your routine, if you had one, what were some of the things that keep you from sleeping? Okay, what are some of the barriers that kind of come up? So I know there's a delay, but if you can just put in the chat, what are some of the things that keep you from sleep and from sticking to your bedtime, right? When you don't stick to it. 
And as you put some up there, I'll share some of the ones for sure. For me, it's TV, right? I like watching my shows. So I'm like, one more episode, one more episode. Um, and then next thing I know, it's like, oh my God, it's midnight. I need to go to sleep. What am I doing? You know? Um, so TV is one for me. For a lot of people, is the phone, right? They're checking their social media or they get a message and then they're checking. So it's interrupting, right? Maybe they're starting to fall asleep and then beep, the message comes up um, and now they have to go and check it, right? Because it's human nature. We're curious. We want to go see what's there. Um, sometimes it's light. Like I said, in order for us to sleep, it has to be dark, okay? So we are going to have to make our room suitable for sleep, which means not too many things, you know, in the room that are going to keep us awake. Um, and then also making it dark, right? No nightlight, because otherwise that is a bright light that's going to not let the message go across to your brain that it's time for sleep. All right. And then Yvette said, things that keep her up, some of the barriers are weekend activities. Yes, right? We we run late, right? Especially over the weekend, if we go to the movies, then now we're past our bedtime or we go to dinner with our friends. Um, so working late is hard to wind down. Yes, especially working, you know, in the computer when you are working, you're telecommuting and you're working in telehealth, the light of the computer reflects that, that it reflects, it mimics daylight. So it makes us think that, you know, it's time for us to be awake. And then it just kind of wires us up. Or even if it's just, uh, if it's not in the computer, if you're doing a live training or if you're doing, you know, you're working late um, on a face-to-face -face job, you're still sort of wound up because it just came and you rushed right into that. Um, exercising at night too is also a barrier because again, it pumps you up, it gives you energy and it doesn't let your body, right? Start settling down and getting in the process of getting ready for sleep. Um, let me see what else. Mm, foods, sometimes the foods that we eat, you know, I mentioned, what are we eating before we go to sleep? If we're having a full meal before going to bed, our, you know, our belly's full, we don't feel comfortable, you know, we might get heartburn. So then it, we, we don't get good, good sleep. Okay. So we want to eat before, you know, at least two hours before bedtime. So it gives our body time to digest and to be able to relax. Um, drinking, if we are drinking, I talked a little bit about that. If we're, you know, having a glass of wine before going to bed, or if we're having a few drinks, the sleep that we get is not quality sleep. So if it's every once in a while, then, you know, ooh, chocolate keeps me up. Melissa saying chocolate keeps her up. Yeah, well, yeah, chocolate is a boosting, right? It, it's a mood boosting food. So it is going to give us a little bit of a boost um, and keep you up. And it has a little bit of caffeine, I want to say, too. So it gives us a little bit of a boost. All right. Um, getting outside. Okay, so now that we know the barriers, eliminating some of the barriers, you know, with the phone, you want to put it away. You don't want to leave it next to your bed. You want to put it maybe on the dresser because now you have to take some extra steps, right? To go and reach the phone, to read the message that was there. So you do want to, you know, leave it a little bit far away so that it takes you, it takes some extra steps for you to actually reach for it, which is probably, you're probably just not going to anyways, right? Because you're tired and you don't want to have to get up. So put your phone away and that's going to help eliminate that barrier. Put it on silent, put it on, you know, not even on vibrate because on vibrate, brrr, even if it's silent, you still hear it, that there's a message there. And then we want to go check, okay, what it is. Um, so that is with the phone. For darkness, to make the, the room dark, you can use some, um, the some blocking ones, the dark, the dark curtains, right? Some curtains that are going to block the light uh, so that that way you're able to have it, have it dark, even, you know, as it's starting, especially during the winter when, you know, it's like, oh my God, it's hard to trick the kids in the summer when it's eight o'clock and there's still light out. So you definitely want to have some, some blocking, um, what do you want to call it? Curtains during that time, blackout curtains. There it is. I couldn't find the word, um, to help you. Okay. To help keep the room dark and it sets the mood for sleep. 
Okay, so in the room, you want to set the mood for sleep. Again, not too many things that are going to keep you awake, you know, not too many gadgets or things that have too many sounds. Um, you can use music for sure, but it has to be something that is not going to keep you awake, okay, that is not going to pump you up. All right. Um, and then setting a routine. So setting a routine, you do want to have some sort of night routine. You know, when we were kids, we did have some sort of routine, right? It's like we get home from school, we have dinner, maybe we play a little bit with our friends, and then, you know, it's homework time, and then it's time to start the bedtime routine, right? We go shower, maybe we have a snack, and then we read a book, and then we go to sleep, okay? And it usually was at a regular time, every time. And our body eventually learns that that is the time to sleep. And that is the time to wake up that you won't even need an alarm clock because it got enough sleep, you know, when you went to bed, if you set it up correctly. Okay. So what's going to happen is as you fix your rhythm, okay, your circadian rhythm, and you get in the routine mode, okay, you set it up uh, and you work at it, then the sleep is going to get better. Okay, but it's going to take some conscious work uh, and some practice and definitely routine to set it up. So let's see. So for bedtime, you want to stick to it, just like Yvette. You want to be pretty strict, okay? Strict about the bedtime. Even on the weekends when you can, you want to go sleep at the same time so that it doesn't throw it off. Um, you want to start maybe an hour, two hours before bedtime, kind of start shutting it down. You know, meaning you're no longer going to be doing things that are going to activate you and give you energy. Now it's time to put that energy away, start settling down, making the room dark. Uh, if you have the dimming lights in your room, you want to start doing that. You want to start putting the lights down. So that way your the message starts going to your brain that it's time to go to sleep. Um, and no electronics. If you really have issues with sleep, you want to stay away from the screen time, the phone, your tablet. Uh, TV, you know, at least an hour before bedtime so that again, there's no blue light going through that is keeping you awake, okay, that is sending the message that it's still time to play. <laughs> it's time to shut it down. Um, so we want to shut it down. Okay. Uh, another thing that you can do, right, as part of your routine is take a bath at night. Take a bath or take a warm shower. Um, and that is going to help, again, just soothe the body. Again, sending the message that it's time to relax, it's not time to stress out, it's not time to, you know, think, oh my God, I have all these things to do. It's time to kind of start honing it down and settle down, okay? So that is going to be an hour, you know, to two hours before bed, you want to start sort of that routine of slowing things down. Um, you want to engage in a relaxing activity. Again, you don't want to do things that are going to activate you, no exercising an hour before bed. I mean, if that's all you got, I guess that's all you got. But you know that that's going to keep you awake, okay, if you need your exercise. But if not, exercise in the morning, exercise in the afternoon, but not after, because then it's going to keep you awake if you exercise at night. Um, relaxation, right? So how do we relax? What are some activities that we can do? What are some of the things that you do already um, to kind of stay in shutdown mode or start slowing down when you go to sleep. If you have not discovered mental health apps, I encourage you to go and check them out. Okay, so some of my favorite are Virtual Hope Box um, because they have the progressive muscle relaxation that is guided and you just play it and just close your eyes, you put your earphones and then you listen to it. And it's great. It starts kind of, again, starts the process of shutting the body down so that we are not stressed out. And he knows that it's time to relax. <laughs> Rosava, watch TV. Yeah, that's me. I'm guilty, right? Uh, guided meditation for sleep. Yeah. So you can use YouTube as well. YouTube has a ton of those. YouTube also has the music for sleep. Um, and it has a ton of different other um resources that you can utilize. It has yoga for sleep, right? <laughs> I really watch TV too. Yes. It's hard. It's hard not to because that's the time that we have to watch TV, right? Especially if they 
are inappropriate content for kids, we have to wait until they go to sleep so we can watch it. And then we get hooked and then we want to keep going. So we have to be pretty disciplined about it and remember to turn it off when it's time to go to bed. Um, and that's what we got. <laughs> yes, black screen music on TV. Ooh, nice. Black screen music. Um, the sounds, okay? You can use the, the nature sounds too. You can start putting soft music um, in the last hour before you go to bed. Um, and then you can read, okay? If reading is boring to you, well, then that's good because you're going to read and you're going to start falling asleep, okay? And that's what we want. Put it on a timer. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Hi, Maria. Uh, you put it on a timer and that's, you know, you don't have to worry about having to turn it off or being on all night and then waking you up like, what is that? in the middle of the night. Um, all right. And let's see here. And aside from that, other relaxing um, things that you can do, coloring, okay, they have the coloring books, so you can color. Um, you can also do an arts and craft. You can knit. You can, um, I don't know, just crafting, whatever it is that, you know, that you enjoy doing. But again, that is something that is calm, that is not going to get you all excited and wake you up again. Yeah. All right. Um, teas. You can have a tea also. You can incorporate having a little snack before bed. Sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night because we had dinner early and we're hungry. Okay. The sugar levels are off and our body says, hey, feed me. I need some glucose. And and you wake up in the middle of the night. So having a, a light snack before going to bed, maybe an hour before bed, is going to help you maybe sleep through the night. And you want to, you know, add a carb and a protein. So maybe you have um, like a peanut butter sandwich or a turkey sandwich. Um and that's going to help you, again, sleep through the night and not have to wake up because your body's hungry. Um, okay, and then having an herbal tea, and I'll talk about some of the herbal teas that are helpful. Okay, so some of the teas that are helpful in, in keeping us uh, or helping us with sleep and helping us ease, okay, into sleep so that we can relax are chamomile. So chamomile tea, hops tea, licorice, licorice, I can say licorice, licorice, uh, passion flower, and valerian root teas. You can have, some of them have like a combination of, of all of them, lavender as well, um, and some of them are just like on their own. So choose whatever flavor you enjoy the most, you know, and then you can have an herbal tea before you go to bed. Um, you can have a smoothie as well. Maria's going to laugh because we were talking about smoothies earlier, but um, cherries, talking about food that helps us with sleep, bananas, cherries, um, oatmeal instead of the morning. You can have it at night or you can have it both. Um, milk, um, because it has, you know, uh, the tryptophan, like the, especially warm milk. And then also turkey. Turkey has the tryptophan and that makes us sleepy, right? It helps us kind of, again, just relax the body. Um so let me see, yogurt, milk, cherries, bananas, all those are helpful to help, again, soothe um, and put us to sleep. So cherries have actually released melatonin. It helps us release melatonin, which is one of the hormones that helps with sleep. Okay. Um, so those are some of the foods and then tools, other tools that can help. So light. Remember I talked about light and dark. In order for us to regulate our sleep, we, ha we have to see it in light and darkness. Um, light during the day. We have to get sunlight during the day. Go outside. Make sure that you're not wearing sunglasses when you go outside. Because, again, the light has to go through your eyes to send the message to the brain that it's time to be awake. So if you use the dark curtains, and I forgot the term again, Melissa, uh, blackout curtains. If you use the blackout curtains, make sure that in the morning you open them up and you let all the light in because that way your body knows that now it's time to be awake. Okay. And it starts regulating the hormones so that during the day you're awake and during the night you're tired and it's time to shut it down and it's time to go to sleep. Um, so at night you make the room dark. In the morning you use the light. Make sure that you get light and then you go get sunlight um you know your sunblock don't get burned but you do need to get natural light 
uh, during the day to help you regulate your hormones when you're off, when they're off. Okay. Um, Epsom salts. So Epsom salts have magnesium and magnesium is relaxes. Okay. It helps ease our stress. So if you're anxious, if you're worried, if you just need to relax, take an Epsom salt bath, you know, there, it's really cheap. You can even get them at the 99 cent store. Throw some in your bath, soak in for a little bit, and it's gonna you're going to absorb the magnesium through your skin instead of taking it in a pill form. They do have it in a pill form, but make sure you ask your doctor if you are wanting to add the supplement, okay? But if not, you can do use it just by taking an Epsom salt bath um, and let it absorb through your skin, and it's going to help soothe your body. It's going to help you relax, and it's going to help you go to sleep. Um, all right, let's see. Room temperature. Your room has to be between, between 60 and 67 degrees in order for optimal sleep. Okay, so you don't want it too hot. You don't want it too cold. You kind of want it in between. You don't want it too hot. You know, not at 70. It's too much. 71, 72 is too much. It's uncomfortable. So between 60 and 67 degrees is the ideal temperature for, for sleep. And then one that, you know, I learned just a few, maybe a couple of years ago was the blue blocker glasses. So if you're really struggling with sleep and you need to regulate it, you can use the blue blockers one hour before you go to bed, you put them on and then, you know, you take them off before you go to sleep. But what they do is again, they block the blue light that's telling you stay awake, stay awake, right? Um, and then they block the blue light and he sends the message to the brain to produce melatonin because it's time to go to sleep and it's going to help you relax and it's going to help you sleep. Um, and if you do that consistently, hopefully, you know, for like a week or so, it's going to help you again, regulate, um, your sleep, but it is a process and it's something that it's a combination of things. It's not just going to be one thing that is going to help you ease into sleep. Um, the, Thing I want you to take out of this talk is that sleep is important. We have to work at it. If we are not getting enough sleep, we have to work at it and make sure that we get it. So there was just a study that came out and they said 10 hours. We were at eight hours of sleep that we needed to get, right? That was the recommendation. The new one is 10 hours of sleep. I know about you, I don't get 10 hours. I get about, you know, six to eight. Um, and that's sort of what my schedule is like, okay? But 10 hours are tough. Um, if you are the nap person that likes to take naps, perfect. Then you can squeeze in the extra hour or two, you know, during the day uh, if you have the time to do that, right? Or if you your schedule allows it. If not, then bedtime has to be earlier so that you have enough sleep uh, for your body to rest, recover, recharge, and be able to do it again, right, the next day. All right. Very good. Any questions before we go? That's kind of it. That's all I got for you guys for sleep. Sleep tips. I know there's a delay, so hopefully some questions come in or any thoughts, anything else that people want to share, maybe other tips that they have that I didn't talk about. Thanks, Melissa. No, no questions. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming. And then I will see you guys next week. So next week is the second one. We're going to talk about self-awareness. So we'll be doing an exercise to kind of attune ourselves with our emotions and see kind of how we experience our emotions in our body. So I really hope that you can come so that you can, again, self-care, right? Self-love uh, and be able to recognize what we're feeling so that we can address it. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Bye.